let's not stay the same. Grow a little bit more. Bender is standing over for the ball as it will be Maryland who will kick things off from College Park. Just awaiting the referee's official whistle. And the ball is rolling in College Park between Maryland and UMBC. Maryland one for one in the win column. UMBC picked up a draw. And both teams looking to stay unbeaten here at one of the game's greatest venues. Maryland will kick it around their back four as they get set up. Ben, in the first 15 minutes, what are you looking for? Just to see how much Maryland attacks. Both teams are going to try to get a feel for this game. But... You know, Maryland has a lot of confidence coming in off that win over Charlotte. So it's going to be interesting to see how aggressive they are forward towards UMBC's back end. And already Ben Bender sent on a run down this right-hand side, trying to catch up to it before it gets to the byline. He does and will spin back. Bender trying to work his way through two defenders. He's bodied off the ball and it rolls out for a UMBC throw. And Maryland coming into this season in the preseason poll was effectively ranked 26. They were the first team out of the top 25 poll in terms of number of votes received but a win over number 18 Charlotte on opening day and you would have to imagine if they take care of business tonight at home they can lay a strong claim to being in the top 25 when that poll is released early on in the week. Comes up ahead in the direction of Taylor Calhera but it rolls out for a throw and Calhera going to be one of the big options up front for UMBC as Bender tries to flick it along and towards Geelan and Quantrell Jones gets his first touch he spills it though and Geelan pokes it ahead it's cleared off the line Dangerous chance there for Maryland. An error by Quantrell Jones in the first three minutes of action. That would have been catastrophic for the Retrievers. Well, Quantrell Jones, usually as steady as they come, the senior who in the spring was second team all-conference in the America East, led the conference in saves per game, led the conference in shutouts, but almost a very costly mistake. It was cleared off the line, and Maryland has had the better of the first two minutes, and a clear-cut chance from Justin Geel, and it was just cleared off of the line by UMBC, who got back well defensively maybe some nerves from UMBC in this game playing in this venue it's definitely not an easy place to play if you're a visiting team so that's also something to look out for it's a good crowd at Retriever Soccer Park for the home opener against Navy they're back at home against LaSalle on Friday for Maryland after this one they're back at home on Friday as well against George Mason will be great to have a Friday night at Ludwig Field for the first time in a while with the full capacity rules back a lot of fans around college soccer know there's not too many better atmospheres than Ludwig on a Friday. Richardson trying to work on his defender, but it rolls out of play in a UMBC throw-in. William Forby thought that he was going to take the throw-in. Instead, he'll show for the ball. Comes long instead, trying to be flicked on in the direction of Calhera, but Rindov able to sweep it up. Stafford tracks back to lay it off for Nitzel. Alex Nitzel, the sophomore from Germany, spent time in the under-19 Bayern Munich Academy, laying it off for St. Martin now, the Maryland native. Yeah, and Brett St. Martin, the senior, started all 11 games last year for Maryland, all Big Ten second team, heart and soul of this Maryland team. Bender goes to ground, and that will be a whistle and a free kick coming up to the Terps. 39th minute was where Caden Stafford found the goal in opening day. As this one's going to be chipped towards the back post in the direction of Geelan. Richardson will catch up to it. Cut towards the byline. Keeps the ball in play. Nick Richardson right along the line. And it will go out for a corner kick. Nice job by Nick Richardson realizing he had a corner opportunity there. If he won it, took it. And a good chance for Maryland early in this game. Brian Padilla going to go over to the corner flag. It'll be an in-swinger from him with his left foot. Both hands go up in the air for the native Texan. It's whipped in towards the back post. The header is first by a retriever. Comes right back to Padilla, who's able to chest it down and win it back. Padilla cutting towards the middle, laying it off now. And back it comes for Bender. Richardson's going to get to it first. Kane Stafford can't quite catch up to it. It's Alex Nitzel's territory there on the left. Gets it back to Stafford. Stafford cutting towards the middle. Finds Bender. Chipping it ahead down that left side. And the play is offsides for Padilla. 
We were wondering how aggressive Maryland was going to be early in this game, and so far I think we're getting our answer. They are pushing up the field. They are sending numbers up. Looks like Sasha wants to be aggressive against this UMBC team. Winningest coach in UMD history, Sasha Swarovski, chronicled his success over 29 seasons. Three national championships. He's produced two different Mac Herman Trophy winners for the best player in college soccer. Nine conference tournament championships. Hoping to usher Maryland to the top of the mountain once again here in the fall of 2021. Flicked on now for UMBC, cut out by Richardson. Falls now for Padilla, who has a really nice touch to spring Stafford down the left side, but Quantrell Jones is going to catch up to it first. Baltimore Celtic product was his club team growing up, also a DC Academy, DC United rather, Academy product. This is 33rd start over the past four seasons for Quantrell Jones. He has been a fixture between the sticks for Pete Karingi. Yeah, several Baltimore Celtic alum on this team. Brett St. Martin for Maryland, another one. He's a senior also, so I'm sure those two have played together and some history there. A lot of great history with some Baltimore clubs, Baltimore Armor as well. Celtic has certainly produced several over the years that have gone on to play in this part of the country. Richardson stepping up, getting the space that UMBC gives him. Padilla laying it off now for Nichols. And Richardson trying to slide it in for Bender. St. Martin stepping up, but now UMBC has some numbers going forward. On the left side, Calhera trying to catch up to it, and Taylor Calhera will get there first. Cutting towards the middle is Calhera. It's intervened, though, really nicely by Richardson, who tracked back from the right wing back spot to take it away. Now looking to spring Geelin on a run down the left side. Geelin's going to be second to it. It's well, in the, first, in the first seven minutes of this game, Nick Richardson's been everywhere for Maryland. He's going up. He's going down. He's been on the ball a lot. That ball actually did stay in play as Stafford kept it between the white lines. Tight quarters to get it to Johnston, who will open it up now for Richardson. Maryland's had the majority of the possession, but UMBC has shown that they can spring a couple of counters, and that might be the plan for the retriever. Sit back and then pick your moments to counterattack. Here's Stafford cutting to the right foot, lays it off for Johnston. It's poked away, though, from the danger only half cleared, and now it is a chance for the retrievers to clear their lines. Richardson. Going to put it right back into a dangerous area on the back post. Jones is able to make the catch. Nice idea there from Nick Richardson. Just a good job of Quantrell Jones for getting into that ball first. We are under the lights here at Ludwig Field on a Sunday afternoon heading into the evening in College Park. Second leg of our Big Ten Plus Maryland soccer doubleheader. Navy took a win over the Maryland women's team by the score of 3-1. to one. Maryland trying to pick up a W on the men's side. That loss to the Maryland women's soccer team was the first loss for Maryland athletics in this still very early academic season. Coming into that game between Maryland volleyball, men's soccer, women's soccer, and field hockey, they were 8-0 as an athletic department, as Padilla has it now on the right side. Combination play with Nichols, tries to cut it back for Padilla, but was making a different run than what Richie Nichols had in mind. So it'll be a goal kick for Jones. Well, a loss is going to happen at some point. Yeah, I mean, you, you play a full athletic season over the course of several different sports it was eventually going to happen but still impressive good starts impressive. all the way around for adam hughes on the volleyball side ray leone for women's soccer especially after both of those teams did not have great seasons last year it's nice to see them get back on the right side of things sure felt good for adam hughes to pick up a win over a rival in virginia maryland trying to pick up a win over a rival in umbc here on the men's soccer field bender gets to its second Now it's over onto the right side where Wagoner can catch up to it. All the way back it comes for Julian Kanza. Along in the direction of UMBC Retriever. But Nichols able to get a touch to it and Bender tracking all the way back. Ben Bender has a lot of freedom to go forward and track back when necessary. And now Stafford will lay it off for Johnston. Well, after the year Ben Bender had as a freshman, you understand why Sasha Sorovsky trusts him so much. All Big Ten freshmen, all Big Ten second team. Just did a great job in the midfield for Maryland last season. St. Martin wants a switch of play and gets it all the way over to the left side for Nitzel. Back comes for Rindolph. 
Maryland content to pick and choose when they attack at the moment. As Padilla has dropped into a deeper role to retrieve that pass and gets it back to St. Martin. Maryland's had the possession and one clear scoring opportunity from Justin Gielen that was saved off of the line. This one's intercepted though and before retrievers could spring a counter down the right side, Maryland able to intervene. Maryland only had three players who started all 11 games last season in the 11 contests that they were able to play, which was the fewest contest that they'd played in a season since 1972 due to the all-conference only schedule that the Big Ten had implemented due to the pandemic as Nicholas Neumann gets a touch to it and plays it with his feet to St. Martin. But the same back four for Maryland, only two changes being made for Sasha Sarovsky from the win against Charlotte to this one, Caden Stafford in place of Joshua Bulma and Nicholas Neumann in net in place of Jamie Lowell, but only one of the field players changed in the starting 11 against Charlotte as here comes UMBC down the right side, trying to cut it right back towards the middle and into a dangerous area. It was poked away and he whistled in a free kick coming up now to Maryland. Well, Ben, you talk about Maryland's back four. That's an experienced back four too. You got a sophomore, two juniors, and a senior. They know what they're doing. They're very experienced. And Maryland's defense should be one of the strong points for them this season. Good first touch from Brian Padilla to settle things down on the side. It's out for a throw, and you're absolutely right. Sasha Swarovski has talked about the importance of the defense this season, how important it was to get a clean sheet in the opener against Charlotte. And after there was all sorts of tumultuous activity for Maryland in the back last season with all the injuries that had stacked up, forcing a lot of playing time from guys like Isaac Ngobu, Kento Abe, and the like. It's got to feel really good for Sasha Swarovski to know he can circle in his back four just about every time he wants. But here's Calhera trying to get into that back four. Cuts it towards the middle. In the direction of Wagoner, but Neumann there first. And those guys are good players. They're on the team for a reason, but they just don't have the experience and the maturity that those four have in the back that Sasha goes to. The back four of Nditzel, St. Martin, Rindov and Richardson. Yet to concede a goal in the still very early season, the 90 minutes against Charlotte. Now about 12 and change gone by here against UMBC. Still no score from Ludwig Field. Maryland has had the better of the chances, the more of the possession. As Johnson tracks back and switches the point of attack. So cool to hear the fans and be back in this atmosphere under the lights. Everyone's loving it. The crew is in full voice tonight, as they were on Thursday, it should be said, as that's well out of play for a Maryland throw-in. It was interesting talking with Nick Richardson on Tuesday before the soccer game against Charlotte, the opener. He said everyone loves playing at Ludwig, even opponents. That was pretty interesting to see, and it's a fair point because, you know, obviously on the road, you love trying to silence the home crowd. There's not many better home crowds in the men's soccer scene than here at Ludwig Field, and the intensity was just kind of lacking from the atmosphere in the spring when only a few friends and family were allowed, not the full crew, not the full stands here at Ludwig Field. So the intensity certainly back for the goalkeepers, to be sure. They want to be the ones to shut up the crew right behind them and silence this Maryland crowd. Bender tries to play a combination with Stafford, ends up getting on the end of it anyway. Falls to Stafford on the left wing. Caden Stafford trying to... Send one right back in towards the middle. Goes to the corner flag. Kept in play by the freshman Stafford. Little fancy footwork to get around one defender. Stafford cuts it right back towards the middle. It's cut out. And in the end, it'll be a goal kick. That was an incredible move by Caden Stafford to get around that UMBC defender. And if Maryland had one in the box, that could have been in the back of the net. That was excellent by the freshman. Fancy footwork from the Philadelphia Union Academy product. Jones will be able to get it away. UMBC will be able to push a little bit higher up. Long in the direction of Richardson. Richardson stepping up. Now Johnson stepping up. He goes to ground and a whistle and a free kick will go the way of the Terps. 
Seems like every time UMBC is able to get numbers forward, or at least the ball forward, Maryland's been outnumbering them defensively. They've had the better of the tactics so far, the more of the ball so far, it has to be said. As Bender springs it out wide for Padilla. Brian Padilla leaves it for Johnston intelligently. Got a heavy touch there from Malcolm Johnston, and it's swept out of danger. It's the back four we keep talking about for Maryland. Every time UMBC tries to get numbers, that back four is there. But just that final link-up play right now missing for the Terps as they've gotten closer and closer over the course of this game. 15 minutes gone by, and we remain scoreless. Geelan whips it right back in towards a dangerous area. It was last ditch defending from the Retriever. Still not quite out of danger, and a shot from Padilla is deflected away. Only one retriever up top, and Maryland will be able to easily get it into their back four. Right now, UMBC just trying to defend their goal, and once they do, and they possess the ball in their defensive third, not too many outlets for them at the moment going forward. Yeah, that's still the same aggressive nature that we saw in the first five, seven minutes is still there for Maryland. Just trying to put that final touch on it, like you said, Ben. Gielen now with his back towards goal. Johnston. Out wide for Padilla once again, who's occupying this right-hand side. In towards the back post, a diving header, and it's saved off of the post. Jones might have just gotten a touch to that. It caught Woodwork as well. And Maryland creeping closer and closer. Best chance for Maryland right there. Calhair is offsides. Great ball in. Header was there, just a little to the left of goal, but it was awfully close for Maryland. Unsure if Jones did get a touch to it or not, but Maryland not far away at all. And they certainly look the more likely to score first. St. Martin, look at how advanced the back four is for Maryland right now. St. Martin just over the midfield line. Rindov, a center back partner at the midfield line, and the wing backs are getting into the attack with Nitzel on the left and Richardson on the right. It's a deep shape at the moment for the Retrievers as Gielan's going to catch up to this one first. Justin Gielan trying to slide it in, and he does. The senior for Maryland caught up to it. He was the only one watching the ball, and he put it in the back of the net. Maryland won, UMBC nothing. Well, Justin Gielan does a great job of just out-hustling two UMBC defenders. The ball was over him. He gets to it first and puts his foot on it in the back of the net. That's a great job by the senior from Edgewater, Maryland. Was kept off the score sheet in the win over Charlotte, but in the 18th minute, he strikes first. And as I mentioned, Ben, it looked like he was the only one with his eye on the ball in that area of the field. Well, it was just over three people, and Justin Geelan simply outran the UMBC defenders and got to that ball first and put it in a perfect spot while Quantrell Jones could not get to it. That's an excellent job, and the Terps are on the board first. He scored the last goal from the run of play in Ludwig Field in the spring, that goal to tie things up against Rutgers in the Big Ten quarterfinals and send the game to penalties, which Maryland won. And after Caden Stafford got the goal, on Thursday, Geelan gets on the board first, but here comes UMBC. It's cut out initially by Nichols, and then eventually it's Nitzel that can get it away. Up ahead towards the goal scorer, Geelan, who knocks it out. And now for UMBC. See how that changes their tactics now chasing the game by a score of one to nothing, 18 minutes in. Well, it's got to feel good for Justin Geelan. Only had one goal last year and one assist, and now in the second game of the year, he's already on the score sheet. Got to feel good for the senior, the local kid. Seventh goal in a Maryland shirt. And he's really the veteran leading the line. A lot of underclassmen, very talented underclassmen. But along with Brian Padilla, the other senior, the two veterans on the team leading the line. An interception, though, from UMBC sends the retrievers the other way. Down the right side, they go with Forby. Calhera is in the area as well as it's cut towards the back line. A shot, and it just is bundled in. An instant response from UMBC. A gut punch to Maryland, and it's 1-1. Well, UMBC 
responds quickly. Maryland gets the goal. They're feeling really good about themselves. It's Taylor Cahara for the Retrievers. The sophomore from Towson gets it done. And we are leveled at one. Great start offensively here in the first half as UMBC has to feel good about that. Check that. It was actually Ryan Betcher who was able to get on the back post to bundle it in. The junior from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania, his first goal of the season. He started in all 26 games that he's been in Baltimore for, for UMBC. He had a goal last his year first for UMBC, goal of the too. And an instant response, a smash and grab goal for UMBC after it was Maryland that had all of the possession, all of the chances going forward, and one real clear-cut opportunity on Nicholas Neumann's net. If it got to the back post, it was going to be up to the Maryland defense. And it was just bundled in on the back post, and we are back on level terms. First goal conceded by Maryland in the very early campaign. Here they come going forward again, though, with Gielan. For Padilla, Gielan. Feeling confident after his goal. It's taken to ground, no whistle as Richardson picks it up. Richardson laying it off for Gielan towards the byline. He's not going to get to it first, but it's swept out for a Maryland corner. And the pressure is applied by the Terps once again. I think Gielan might have been offside there. So it might not have been the worst thing in the world that he caught up to that ball instead of corner for Maryland. There were some shouts for an offside, some looks over towards the assistant referee. And here comes the in-swinger. And the corner kick from the near side. It goes towards the back post. Header is won initially by UMBC, and it will be another corner kick this time on the other side. And Padilla will make the long jog over, but it's Richie Nichols who will claim the hand, uh, the, claim the corner kick, rather. Target the third corner of the first half for Maryland. So they definitely had their chances, and they've scored. It'll be interesting to see the possession stats at halftime, because UMBC has not had much of the ball. But they've got their goal. Flicked right back in towards the near post, not quite clear to danger yet. Sprayed back out for Nichols. And it comes now for Stafford, edge of the 18. One touch to his left. Now is forced to turn back, and Maryland will reset over to the right side with Bender. Shouts for handball. It's not given. Bender cuts on to his left. Now back on to his right. One more to his left. Ben Bender trying to pick out the far post. It takes a deflection, and UMBC clears their lines. Right back, and it comes, though, for Padilla. Whipping one in with a left foot in a dangerous area. Only comes as far out as Nitzel. Nitzel's going to have a go. It's way wide. Definitely looked like Ben Bender might have gotten away with a handball on that touch. Certainly looked like the outstretched arm might have knocked it down, but in the end, no harm, no foul for UMBC. And it could be a goal kick for Quantrell Jones. Well, if you look at all of the stats outside of the goal, you would think that if there were to be two goals scored, they would both be from the hosts. But one shot on goal, one shot in total, and one goal for UMBC. But you got to give them credit. They're not backing down. They're taking this right to Maryland. And like you said, even though Maryland's definitely had possession for more of the first half, UMBC made the most of their chance. And now we'll see how many numbers they do commit forward to try to get a second. As Julian Kanzi will throw it in. Kanzi, the junior from Germany, spins all the way back to the back four. Dylan Nesteruk. In the back there, able to get it away. Cut in towards the middle. Sprayed out to the far side. And whipped right back in towards the back post. It's over everyone. That's a dangerous looking opportunity for UMBC. A good place for them to whip the ball in, but just over hit it. Nice move from Padilla to get it out of his feet. And he's able to force it ahead for Bender. Heavy touch, though, from Ben Bender, and it can be swept away by the Retrievers. Will 
Richardson will have the throw in. Richardson with a little bit of a heavy touch as he tries to spin onto it and it will go out of play. It was interesting hearing in the postgame press conferences after the draw against Navy from Pete Karingi about Navy and their fitness. He was really impressed with their fitness for such an early game in the season. Made UMBC run a whole lot and the midshipmen were perfectly fine to run themselves. It'll be interesting to see how much UMBC tries to take the air out of this game as much as possible. Second game in four days between Thursday to Sunday for both of these teams. The Maryland bossed the game against Charlotte. They were the ones with the lead the whole time. UMBC had the lead late against Navy. It was an 88th minute equalizer for the mids to tie things up and that's the way the game ended. But they had to go 110 minutes for the draw. Maryland only had to play 90. So UMBC would love to play this game at as much of a walking tempo as possible. Maryland going to try to run as much as possible, of course, knowing that the retrievers went the distance. The other part about that is that you know, we talk a lot about how soccer was in the spring and the season did not end too long ago. Flip the script, you're back in the fall, you're back playing games. And both of these teams could be a little fatigued. They did not have a normal off season, they did not have normal training programs. So very interesting to see that as we're gonna have our first sub here. Hunter George is going to come on for the Terps. It was interesting chatting on Tuesday with Sasha Swarovski, who's a longtime proponent of a multi-semester soccer season. He said he was hoping that would become the standard as a turnaround from the spring to the fall. He spoke heavily about the congested schedule in the fall and how uh, he was hoping for a eventual switch to a fall and spring season that would more closely resemble that of a European soccer schedule. As this one's flicked on ahead for UMBC, they could run onto it onto the right side. Shouts for offsides. Flag stays down. Cut right back in towards the middle of the shot, and it just goes up and over the bar. Not far off at all. Might have gotten a deflection. It does, and it's a corner kick for UMBC. Well, UMBC's not getting a lot of chances, but they're sure making the most of them when they happen. Sasha Sarovsky unhappy with a corner kick decision. But a corner kick it will be. It's the first of the day for the Retrievers. The corner kick for UMBC, taken by number six, Julian Kanza. It'll be Kanzi, Kanza rather, the center back from Germany, the junior team captain, who will whip one in with his left foot and in swinger. Right hand goes up. Ball comes in. It's onto the near post. It's flicked on towards the back. Nobody. Home for the Retrievers, though, in a black jersey, and it will be a Maryland throw -in. Decent looking ball, though, for Kanza into a dangerous area of the park. That was the first corner of the game for UMBC. Like we said, when they're getting chances, they are not messing around down there. They're going straight at the Maryland back four. Yeah, they haven't had many attacks, but when they do, they all seem to look fairly potent, and they've troubled Maryland a number of times in the back line. Nicholas Neumann has been forced into some action. As Stafford chests it down for Maryland. Now Nitzel on the far side back to Stafford. Trying to play Bender on the left once again. Shouts for offside, and this time the flag will go up on the near side. It's offsides against Ben Bender, a little bit over-aggressive on that occasion for the sophomore from Baltimore, playing against a school that is... Registered in its hometown. UMBC making the trip down I-95 to College Park on a Sunday evening to cap off our Big Ten plus Maryland soccer doubleheader here on Sunday. UMBC content to kick it around their back line at the moment. Now near side it comes for Kanza. Calhera trying to spin and turn on it and he was just unable to keep the ball in play. That's 4B. As a matter of fact, my apologies. Joshua Boma is going to check into the game now for Maryland. Justin Geelan will come off. The goal scorer for Maryland is embraced on the sideline by Sasha Swarovski and the assistant coaches. And Jason Russell Rowe is going to check into the game as well for Caden Stafford. Talked about Jason Russell Rowe's impact on the game Thursday. Had an assist on the only goal for Maryland. This one's flicked ahead for Calhera. Down the left side, 
Taylor Calhera trying to work. He gets a shot off near post, and it's a good save from Nicholas Neumann. It had to be, because that was rolling towards the near post and a dangerous opportunity for the Retrievers. But when they do attack, they certainly look like they can ask a whole lot of questions of this Maryland back line, which has been put under more and more pressure as the first half has gone along nearly 30 minutes old. Well, they've had three shots, and all three shots have been on goal. They've been efficient in their attacks. Sitting back, letting Maryland have a lot of the ball, and then trying to spring the trap to hit them back the other way. Terps will switch the point of emphasis over to the right for Richardson. Here's Hunter George, the transfer from San Diego State, trying to roll it along for Bender. It's swept out of harm's way. And uh, nobody will pressure Neumann, so he is plenty of time. Nicholas Neumann, the junior from Germany, had a season-ending injury in the spring, but started three games before that. His first game since March the 19th for Maryland. The 2019 Big Ten second teamer. Here's Russell Rowe on it, gets taken to ground. That's going to be a whistle and a foul, and an opportunity for a pretty dangerous set piece for the Terps. Thought we might see a card there. Look like a dangerous foul on Russell Rowe. Carter will stay in the referee's pocket. As the Terps will take it quickly in the direction of Johnston, trying to catch the Retrievers napping. It doesn't go according to plan. And now a long run for Nitzel. And a foot race, he's not going to win it. UMBC coming the other way. It's a good save from Neumann. Has to get to it first and does. Roar of approval from the student section behind him. Nicholas Neumann coming up big as UMBC with another dangerous looking counter attack. That's outstanding work from Nicholas Neumann. Very dangerous. UMBC had the chance, had two chances actually, but Neumann turns both of them away to keep the game level. Back into the center of the park it comes, now trying to spray it out wide down the right hand side. Plenty of room on that part of the park. And the Trevers will keep it in play. Whipped into a dangerous area towards Calhara. St. Martin's able to chest it down and importantly keep his hands away from the ball as well. That is a difficult skill to do. But now Bender is able to turn it towards Joshua Boma. And Preston, the opening day win against Charlotte. Now long it comes for Russell Rowe. Russell Rowe working on the left, trying to cut it back towards the middle. Bender showing for the ball. Instead, it's a back heel direction of Boma, snuffed out by the Retrievers. That will go out of play, and Alex Nitzel will have a throw in. This game has started to ramp up a little bit in terms of intensity, especially after the UMBC goal, which was just a minute and 12 seconds after Justin Yeelan opened up the scoring. Russell Rowe trying to flick it for Boma, just not quite on the same page. Well, one thing for UMBC is that they have four fouls committed in this game. Maryland has none. So very interesting. UMBC, a little bit more chippy, more, I don't know about more aggressive, but definitely more physical so far with Maryland than Maryland has been with UMBC. Maryland's been a little bit more spaced out in terms of their attacks. UMBC, a little bit more squished together, but still it's 1-1. Certainly the tactical decisions from both coaches, whether to go narrow, whether to go wide. Joe Suhetsky has checked into the game for the Terps in place of Richie Nichols. Russell Rowe is able to catch up to it. Here's Bolmo with an injection of pace down the left side. Gets around one defender, gets around a second, cut in towards the middle for Russell Rowe. We'll have a shot and just dragged wide. Good combination play between Bolma and Russell Rowe and they weren't far off. The Canadian Jason Russell Rowe very close for Maryland to getting the lead. Comes off the bench, but just provides an instant energy to this Maryland offense. Had a great year last year for Maryland. Two goals, eight games, six starts. Does a so great well, job. Are the spring Big Ten all-freshman team. He's got plenty of experience at the youth international level, scored twice for Canada at the Under-17 World Cup in 2019. Also part of the Toronto FC Academy. Missed a good chunk of the season due to injury, about a month in the spring, but was able to come back for the tournament. Maryland trying to exact revenge in the NCAA tournament after they were eliminated in their first game in heartbreaking fashion 
Two goals in the final four minutes and 30 seconds allowed Missouri State to flip a 1-0 Maryland lead into a 2-1 Missouri State win, including a winner with 35 seconds to go. Terps looking to get back to the NCAA tournament and right that wrong. Boma putting some pressure on and forcing a nice touch there from Nesteruk. Near side it comes for Kanza. Now in the direction of 4B, but that's out of play. Couldn't catch up to the Danish sophomore. Well, last year for Maryland, it was a bit of a surprise to some that they got, even got in the NCAA tournament. The big win over Rutgers at home in the Big Ten tournament. That went to a penalty shootout. A lot of guts shown from Sasso Sarovsky's team Bender, last year. Trying to get on the end of it. Does. Cuts out to his right foot. Tries to slip it in and does. So low spectacular from Ben Bender. And the Terps have the lead right back. Ben Bender, the Baltimore native, the sophomore. We talked about how big he was last year for Maryland. Coming up big today as the Terps take a 2-1 lead with 11 minutes to go before halftime. Credit Nick Richardson with the assist, his first helper of the season. One Baltimore native to another against the team from Baltimore. And the Terps have the lead right back. 11 and a half minutes to go in the first half of play. And after a 1-0 win against Charlotte, you, this Maryland season had a little something for everyone. If you like KG defensive affairs, the 1-0 win would surely put a smile on your face. If you're a fan of seeing all the goals go in, you're going to want to stick around for the conclusion of this one. And we still have another 55 minutes to go. It's already 2-1. And Forby is going to force Richardson into heading one away. It does go out for a throw-in and not a corner kick, which Maryland will enjoy. Well now, we Bender. well, now we shift to UMBC. Are they going to put more numbers forward in the last 10 minutes of the half? Are they going to try to equalize the game? Or do they just want to make keep this at 2-1 going into halftime, make their adjustments, and then we'll see what they come out doing in the second half. Very interesting here for Pete Karingi. Long throw and going to come here from Kanza. It's flicked in towards the near post. Both heads go up, and it will be a goal kick for Neumann in the end. It's worth noting, you can see behind Nicholas Neumann's goal, several members of the crew as well. That's usually the indication of just how full Ludwig Field is if the entire crew is behind the goal that Maryland is attacking. It's a solid crowd if they're behind both goals. It's a loud and it's a full crowd. And that is the case here tonight. Trying to get it ahead in the direction of Johnston Richardson is. In the end, he's able to find Russell Rowe with his back towards goal. That's really well done in the end from UMBC just to get it away briefly. But now float ahead, uh, poked ahead rather in the direction of Johnston. Almost was able to float it for the Canadian. George puts the pressure on. And Russell Rowe wins it back towards the byline. Jason Russell Rowe gets taken to ground. Referee says get up, play on. Uh, Sasha Sarovsky's not going to be happy about that. Richardson able to turn onto his defender though and work down the right side. This will be a foul and a free kick for Maryland. Good looking opportunity to whip one in here for the Terps. Well, Sasha Sarovsky came onto the field and just started screaming after that no call. He's known to have a fiery temper. And we talk about that Big Ten quarterfinal game against yeah. Rutgers got sent off with back to back yellow cards and there's a retriever down at the moment. Certainly not a good sign and hopefully it is just a cramp or something of the like. The goal from Justin Gielen in the 18th minute. Ryan Betcher came back to equalize a minute and 12 seconds later for UMBC. And then a goal in the 34th for Ben Bender. And it is two to one right now in favor of Maryland, hoping for two wins out of two before they wrap up their three game homestand to start off the season against George Mason on Friday, then a really difficult two-game stretch for the Terps the following week. They have to play Virginia at Audi Field in D.C. and then head to the nation's capital to take on a Georgetown team that was 2019 national champions and are always a threat to go back to the College Cup. Well, Georgetown, number five in the country right now. That's going to be a huge test going to their place. Two of the last three national champions going at it. That's going to be awesome to see. And then the Virginia game, you talk about that. That's going to be a great atmosphere at Audi Field in D.C. where D.C. United play. 
Really looking forward to that between the Terps and Cavaliers. Maryland looking forward to this set piece opportunity right here. It's Hunter George standing over it. Whips one in towards the near post, gets a flick on, but goes wide. The idea was there for George and the Terps, but the execution not quite necessary what Sasha Swarovski wanted. And it remains two to one. Under 10 minutes to go in a first half that has changed tempo several times. But it seems like every time after a goal, there is either another goal from UMBC's perspective or the tempo ramps up just a little bit. And we're at a pretty blistering pace right now. Four shots on goal for UMBC, forcing Neumann into three saves. Only one save so far for Quantrell Jones. On Maryland's three shots on goal, two of them have gone in. Out wide it comes for Boma. Trying to turn into some space on the left channel. He does and they'll use his pace to advance the ball a little bit for Maryland. Circle back though and find Johnston. Nitzel. Bender. Bender goes to ground, free kick Maryland. Johnston raced over to the ball thinking about taking it quickly and now Maryland will restart with a little bit more pace. Suhetsky sprung over to the left side for Nitzel and now Boma. Left side cut off by the retriever so they'll go back to the middle and try the left once more. Suhetsky looking for a long cross in the direction of Russell Rowe gets on the end of it first touch tries to cut it towards the byline cut right back in towards the middle a shot and a goal. It was all set up by Jason Russell Rowe and the Terps have three in the first half. Well, like we talked about, Jason Russell Rowe coming off the bench for Maryland just gives them that extra energy as the crew roaring in approval of that goal. Jason Russell Rowe, the Ontario native, extending the lead Maryland with three goals in the first half against their in-state rival UMBC. And it's a first goal in a Maryland shirt for Hunter George, the transfer from San Diego State, who got on the end of the little flick from Russell Rowe. And after Jason Russell Rowe has come on from the bench, he has made a huge impact on this game. Substitution for Maryland after the goal, as Griffin Dillon is going to come on. Ben Bender has put in a shift in the midfield. He's going to get a much deserved rest in the final seven and change of this first half and for UMBC it's a mountain to climb now with plenty of time to do it. Forby will send it back to Kanza. For Jason Russell, that's also two assists in two games now. Gotta love the energy from him. Passes have been very crisp to start the season. Goals for Geelan, Bender and George. Assists for Rindov, Richardson and Russell Rowe. And a rip-roaring start to this first half for Maryland. How does UMBC respond? A goal in the final seven minutes for them in this first half would make the team talk a lot easier for Pete Karingi. His team faces a three to one deficit right now. Flicked onto the far side for Nitzel to deal with. Kept in play by the retrievers. And Bohm is able to get around one defender and the foul will allow Maryland to relieve some pressure. A lot of fouls in the first half for UMBC. I believe that's number seven for the Retrievers and still none for Maryland. None of them with any malice in them though. Oh, of Terps course. trying to get around the Retrievers and a couple of stuck in legs going for the ball. I think that's evidenced by the fact that the referee has not gone to the pocket, recognizing all of them soccer plays. that did boil over a little bit, Maryland and Charlotte, on opening day. After the red card especially, plenty of words exchanged. None of them, I would imagine, particularly in the nature of a compliment. I'd be pretty surprised if that was the case. But so far, so good in terms of a clean game, at least from Maryland's perspective. And the book remains empty for the head referee. Suhetsky just able to get a touch to it. Boma can't 
quite catch up, and now UMBC almost able to get on the receiving end of that one. Instead, it's George running down the left channel. He's got Russell Rowe for support. Hunter George will take it himself, and he didn't miss by much at all. Confidence has to be brimming for Hunter George after his first goal in a Maryland shirt, and he almost got himself a first half brace. Well, the San Diego State transfer, Hunter George, was on the prowl for a second there. Gotta love the aggressiveness that he's showing down towards the net in the first half. Maryland did not have three goals in a, se in a single game all season in the spring. They've got three in the first half in the second game of the fall season and maybe more as Boma is able to work down the left side. Cutting back towards the middle. Josh Boma still taking it himself, now giving it over to George. Cutting in towards the middle, onto his left foot, gets taken down, no call. Good soccer play from UMBC, and now they can try to go the other way as Richardson tries to catch up. Retrievers will wait for some support. Now spring it over to the left-hand side. It's Taylor Calhara with it. Calhara trying to cut towards the byline and wins his team a corner kick. That was an excellent job at the midfield by Nick Richardson to cut off that run. UMBC had a chance there if Richardson doesn't cut off that run, but a great job. It's the first time scoring three goals in a game since the 2019 NCAA tournament, a 4-0 win against Iona. Here at Ludwig Field to cruise into the next round where they were shut down by Wake Forest, and that was how the 2019 Terp season ended. Corner kick coming up now for UMBC. It's an in-swinger towards the near post. It's a dangerous one, and it's cleared away. That got through the traffic. And in, in towards Neumann's net. Maryland was able to head it out of danger. Nesteruk now. In the center back roll, trying to get it through the traffic. A swing and a miss there. Shouts for a handball. It's not given. Richardson gets stuck into a challenge. Rather, Dylan does. And Sasha Sarovsky unhappy with the decision of a UMBC free kick. Pretty important final three and change here in this first half. Ben, if UMBC can grab one back, they will have some momentum heading into the interval. Well, they certainly will, and you got to figure in the last three and change here that UMBC is going to push numbers forward to try and cut that deficit in half. If they're able to do that, then Sasho probably won't be thrilled with his team. Even though they have a 3-1 lead right now, 3-1 is much more comfortable than 3-2. Jackson Betcher is going to take this one. It's whipped in towards the back post, headed on. And now just out of danger. The free kick going to relieve some pressure. And Maryland can clear their lines. Final two and a half minutes of this first half. As Nicholas Neumann will send his team forward and Maryland can continue that high press that has garnered them a whole lot of success here in the first half. The whistle though and Russell Rowe went for that illegally. Last time that Maryland scored three goals in the first half, you'd have to go all the way back to a game against Indiana, who's obviously one of the top teams in the entire nation. That win on the, the October the 18th of Friday in 2019. It was a real turning point for the Terps that game against a team that was ranked sixth in the nation, the Hoosiers. Smartly, at the time, Rindov will let it go over his head and it will be a goal kick. It was a 3 nothing win, as I mentioned, all those goals coming in the first half on a Friday night against the Hoosiers. It was one of the biggest wins of the season for the Terps, especially given that they were just coming off of a one nothing loss here against Georgetown at Ludwig Field, a game that had really frustrated the Terps. Indiana was able to exact their revenge in the Big Ten tournament, though. Of course, Indiana last season runners up to the Marshall Thundering Herd out of Conference USA. Yeah, how about that? A group of five team winning it all. Got to feel good for small markets. That was one of the stories in the college sports season in the spring. Obviously, a very congested spring with fall and spring sports taking place at the same time. Georgia was not on the same page there as the left winger for Maryland. 
And so Jones will be able to pick it up, no problem. There's a Cinderella run for an unseeded team. To go all the way after, as mentioned, the real blue bloods of college soccer, Georgetown and Maryland, and won the last two national championships. The team from West Virginia won it all in the spring, and they're the defending champs. Maryland trying to get right back to the promised land, though, in the fall of 2021. With a comfortable 3-1 lead right now as Boma tries to put the pressure on and almost got there first. Instead, Kanzi flicks it ahead for a Maryland throw in and 25 seconds to go. And the Terps with a comfortable lead. You'd have to imagine they're in no rush at all to take it, and that is, in fact, the case. Have to wonder any substitutions UMBC might make at halftime if they want to get more midfielders or more forwards in. Should be very interesting. We'll see if there's any personnel changes or any tactical changes for Pete Karinke because that is the, how the first half is going to come to a close. Four combined goals. It was Justin Geeland who opened the scoring. Ryan Betcher only 72 seconds later, but Ben Bender and Hunter George has made it 3-1 to one at the interval. We will step aside and come back in just a few to look back at the first half and ahead towards the second. It's Maryland 3, UMBC 1 on Big Ten Plus. Second half of action here at Ludwig Field on a Sunday night in College Park alongside Ben Reitman. I'm Ben Curtis. Thanks so much for sticking with us and hanging out on a Sunday night of soccer between Maryland and UMBC, two in-state rivals. And the Terps have a 3-1 to one lead right now. It was 1-1 to one after 18 and a half minutes. Justin Geelan and William Forby scored within mere moments of each other, but then a goal from Ben Bender and a goal from Malcolm Johnston, who is, excuse me, given to... Hunter George it has actually now been credited to Johnston. My apologies, but regardless, three to one, win, three to one lead right now for Maryland. Yeah, Maryland really aggressive towards the end of the first half, and it showed two goal lead going into the second half. We'll see how UMBC adjusts. We'll see how many numbers they put forward, or if they want to keep Maryland from scoring anymore because the Terps have looked very good so far tonight. Yeah, it was initially a goal, the third goal credited to Hunter George. Instead, it's Malcolm Johnston who gets credit with the third on that wonderful assist from Jason Russell Rowe. Maryland in their white jerseys. They're now attacking from right to left. UMBC in those black jerseys attacking from left to right. And it's an uphill climb right now for the Retrievers if they're going to find their way back into this one. Stafford trying to turn on his defender. That'll be a Maryland throw in for the Terps right now. It's largely about game management, but a two goal lead, the old cliche goes, is most dangerous in soccer. Because one goal, if you sit too far back, can make it a very interesting game indeed. Stafford, now Bender. A three-goal lead would certainly add to that comfort and that confidence towards the back post. And cleared away from danger as 4B traps, tracks back. In the first minute of the second half, Maryland with an attack. Calhera trying to catch up to the end of that one, almost got to it and enforced a really nice play from Rindolph, but Calhera bodies Rindolph off of it. And in the end, it's swept away by St. Martin, trying to keep it over the end line. Assistant referee though, so, though says it went out of play. Off the end of the back line, it will be a corner kick for UMBC. To finish that thought, Maryland from the attack uh, in the first minute of the second half. Very clear, they're not gonna sit on this two goalie. They wanna go and they wanna add and try to get more. Chance for the Retrievers to get right back into the swing of things. The next goal in this game going to, of course, be absolutely huge for Maryland if it's theirs. It's a three-goal cushion for UMBC if they're able to get one right back. Game gets very interesting, and the Retrievers get a lot of confidence. Noiman able to parry that one away. Right back into the center it comes, and flicked away just towards the back post. UMBC getting back over to the right side. And right back into the mixer it comes. It's a good-looking curler towards the edge of the area, but Bender able to sweep it away, trying to spring Stafford forward. Nestruk able to get it out of harm's way, and now Stafford is able to catch up to it. Waiting for some numbers to get forward, finds it in Geelan, up towards the top. And in the end, Jones is going to have to go back towards his line, and he's able to make a catch like a wide receiver going back, too, and he's able to make the play, and Nick Richardson is down. Not only is Nick Richardson down, 
That is not good news for Maryland. But the supporters behind Quantrell Jones thought that he stepped over the, the line. Certainly not the least biased bunch in the stadium. And of course, it is about where the ball is, not necessarily where the ball carrier is. So Jones can, in theory, have his toes behind the line as long as he keeps the ball in front of him. And the referees who you would trust a whole lot more than you trust the crew on these types of situations yeah. said that Jones was able to keep the ball in front of the goal line. That's probably a good idea. It's I'm like not sure, I'm not sure okay, what Maryland's home record would be if we let the crew make all the decisions. If we let the crew make good. all the decisions, I think Maryland would be in pretty good shape. Yeah. I think the NCAA might step in, though. Big Ten probably thinks that's not the best possible way to uh, run a game of soccer. It's probably not. Points go out of play for a Maryland throw in. Excellent support from the crew again today. They've been set up outside of the dining halls the past couple of days as people get back to campus and underclassmen move in, freshmen, sophomores move in for the first time. They're outside the South Campus Dining Hall today. If you're familiar with the geography of Maryland's campus, I went over to chat with the vice president of the crew. He's just talking about how excited he was to get back to some sense of normalcy of being back behind the opposing net, making life difficult for the opposing keeper and how fun it was to be back there on Thursday with a full crowd finally after over 600 days. Here's UMBC trying to upset that crowd the other way with an attack. Shouts for handball from the UMBC bench, not from the players on the field. Referee says play on. Well, adding to that, the atmosphere great right now for UMBC. Can't even imagine what it's gonna be like when teams like Indiana start rolling in here. Caden Stafford on the left side now. A little step over, cuts towards the middle. Caden Stafford shoots, it wasn't far wide. Great move by Stafford, turns this towards the center there. Shot it with the right foot, just went a little bit wide. Great idea from the freshman looking to make it two goals in two games. Into the side netting it went. That game against Indiana for Maryland is going to come in the final game of the regular season on Halloween. Boy, is that going to be fun. That's going to be a fun one. Wow. Maryland kicks off. Their Big Ten slate on the 17th of September, taking on Michigan. As it comes to Forby now on the left. William Forby, the sophomore from Denmark, trying to slip his way through two different defenders. In the end, it deflects away and falls to St. Martin. UMBC starting to apply a little bit more pressure now and in the first five minutes of the second half. They've had a couple of forays forward. And Bender and Justin Yeelan trying to hound the ball carriers right now for the retrievers. Pete Karangi's, Karangi's rather's club has done well to get that out of space. Stafford intercepts that pass. It's well done by Mackie Saccarellos to keep it in play. Haven't said Zacharellis' name too much today, the junior from York, Pennsylvania. Working in the back line for UMBC has conceded three goals in the first half. Now here's Bender with it on the right side for Maryland, trying to chip it ahead for Richardson. Shouts for offside, not given, and a corner kick coming up as the Retrievers was just able to defend that one enough to the flag of goats. Terps still applying that pressure. They want to extend the lead, not sit on the two-goal lead. Like you said, Ben, two-goal lead in soccer. The most dangerous one there is. It'll be Brian Padilla who will take the corner kick. It's the fourth of the day for Maryland. UMBC has had three of their own. Josu Hetsky is all alone on the edge of the 18-yard box if Maryland opts to go to him. Instead, it's a curler right towards the six. And it's headed away from danger. Richardson gets it over to the left side, but it's cut out by UMBC. Richardson gets there first and sweeps it all the way back to Neumann to foil a potential UMBC counter. Nicholas Neumann directing traffic. Had a goals against average under one in 2019. Was good for second team All Big Ten. Also was part of the All Big Ten tournament team that year after he had a remarkable performance against Indiana with eight saves, all of them spectacular. The Hoosiers still ended up winning that in overtime from the spot. Got a penalty kick and made the most of it. 
Here in the fall of 2021, though, Bender sprays it out wide to the right. That's going to be a free kick. And referee's going to come have a word with Forby, it appears. That was Suhetsky that got stuck into the challenge for Maryland and won his team a free kick. Dangerous area here. If they want to whip this one into the box, UMBZ needs to be ready. Richardson is standing over it, trying to lay claim to this set piece opportunity. Goals coming in the run of play so far today, and four of them compared to Maryland's one combined goal in their 1 0 win against Charlotte. Four combined goals in UMBC's opener for a 2 2 draw against Navy. Both hands go up for Richardson. Whips one in towards the back post in the direction of Geelan, who is unable to head it on frame. Justin Geelan with that big vertical of his, a basketball standout at DeMatha High School, not too far from here. Out jumped his defender, but was just unable to get the contact on the ball necessary to direct it onto the frame of Quantrell Jones. And somebody from the crew made a nice catch. That high press coming on once again for Maryland as Forby will watch it go out of play down the left side. Maryland with a bright start to this season, looking to make it two wins out of two. We were talking with Sasha Sarovsky on Tuesday just about how exciting it was to get back to something of a normal season. He said when the masks came off in training and the smiles came on, it was wonderful to see. A nice turn of phrase from the head coach and really shows just how important it is for these teams to get back to something of a normal season as Bender catches up to it. Fancy footwork from Ben Bender to get himself into some space and Gielen got a touch, it's cleared away. He's talking about the family atmosphere that Maryland was able to foster. He said, our team really is a family, a community and you know, last season and last year was really just tough to be a college soccer player, to be a human as well, Ben, and he said it just had each other last year. That was so important for Maryland as they underwent, of course, all the adversity happening in the world, also a host of injuries, and to be able to turn around a really difficult number of obstacles into an NCAA tournament berth. It was one of the more impressive jobs by Sasha Sarovsky and his storied and really prolific coaching career. Well, it was tough for Maryland soccer, and just the, they over, able to overcome that just rough starting, like you said, gets the NCAA tournament. Certainly not the result they were hoping for, but you got to give so much credit to Sasha Sarovsky and the whole team, really, for just kind of battling back. A lot of mental toughness they showed throughout the season, and just a great job all around. Sasha Sarovsky talked about really just finding joy in the game of soccer. So over the past 18 months, apart from their immediate family, the team's most joyous time is with their teammates, and so in what was obviously a really difficult spot for a number of reasons, just finding joy in the game Finding joy and being with each other as teammates is really important. Here's Stafford on the left side. Makes a deke to shirk off one defender. Now in towards the middle, it comes a shot from Padilla as deflected away, corner kick for Maryland. Terps continuing to threaten for a fourth, but at the moment the scoreline remains as it was at the interval, 3-1, and Padilla will jog over for Maryland's fifth corner of the day. Starting to queue up towards the penalty spot, the Terps are in the white jerseys. Jostling for position, keep an eye on Gila. It's floated in towards the back post. Getting a header onto it is Rindolf. And now it comes right back for Rindolf, sliced it wide on a difficult technique. That ball's actually gonna stay in play as it just spun right along the end line. UMBC was wise to get to it first. Richardson stepping up now, taking the space the Retrievers give him in that right channel. Trying to play it through on the right side, not quite on the same page. And it'll be a goal kick at the end. Substitution going to come on as William Forby will check back into the game for UMBC. Well, one thing that Sasha Sarovsky has to like is UMBC really has not had a single chance in the first 12 minutes of this half. It's really been all Maryland from an attacking standpoint. And Big Ring is going to have to make some adjustments because they're already down two goals. And they're close to giving up a fourth. Reese Davis, the 
Welsh grad student will make way. As Forby will come back on. A Danish player for a Welsh one. Maryland wins the initial header in the middle of the field. Flicked on towards the right side and cut out and well out of play. Out of Ludwig Field as a matter of fact. Maryland will have a throw in as they enter their attacking third once again. Triangles beginning to develop at the moment for Maryland as Bender cuts it towards the middle for Johnston. Malcolm Johnston already on a goal. Gets it over to Stafford. Stafford cutting it towards the middle, shoots it, deflected away, going for the spectacular follow-up shot goes wide. A couple of players from Maryland could lay claim to a chance on that attack, but in the end it's a goal kick for Quantrell Jones. UMBC is very fortunate not to have given up a goal there. Maryland had three chances to put it in the back of the net. UMBC did just enough to make sure that the score stays 3-1. Nitzel did just well enough there to win it back for Maryland. Comes back to St. Martin. Now Stafford trying to turn, stepping up well though. Was Zacharellos. Nitzel able to get forward for Maryland and just too long for Justin Gielen. Gielen applauds the effort from Nitzel. That's really one of the only options going forward for Maryland. Gielen was most central, and Nitzel was just unable to connect with him. That's too long for Calhera, and it'll be Neumanns. Well, you knew they'd be ready to face <laughs> against an in-state rival. And we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, it. it's the Sunday before classes start, so the crew getting one last chance to get all their anxiety, all their last apprehension about classes tomorrow out on their in-state rivals and certainly making themselves heard. Well, when classes are starting, I don't want to know what they're going to do to the George Mason Patriots if they come in here on Friday. But it really was interesting to hear from Nick Richardson. It was a great point. We've already talked about it on the airwaves, just about how much everyone likes being a Ludwig Field. Obviously, you don't love it when you're the one being shouted at, but it no, brings that don't. extra intensity that you didn't really have in the spring when there were maybe 25 or 50 friends and family you know, you talk to a lot of athletes as this one's over the top to Stafford. Get back to that point in a minute. As Stafford tries to go onto the right channel, cuts towards the byline. Stafford's going to have to turn back towards the corner. He's got two retrievers on him, and it will go out of play for a goal kick. Going back to that point, you talk to a lot of athletes about whether or not they'd rather score a goal or make a basket or whatever sport it might be in front of their home crowd or a road crowd. A lot of them would say the road crowd to silence their opponents. Uh, you know, a great crowd like this one, you'd certainly love to be able to flaunt your stuff in front of a crowd like this. And it really has just upped the intensity on the field. You can see it in the product on the field. Everyone's just kind of that much more engaged. There's that little extra edge. Well, you got to feel like the team itself definitely feeds off of the energy that the crew gives. They feed off the energy that the fans give. And that aspect of the game just wasn't there last year. So the energy that's that they are displaying, part of it definitely is coming from the crew and coming from the fans. And there's also just that extra gear with the in-state rivalry, UMBC and UMD. It's so cool to see these two teams go at it and there go the crew again. You've already mentioned the Baltimore Celtic connection between a number of players on these teams. A lot of Maryland natives who grew up playing either with or against each other. A lot of familiarity. And as the saying goes, that can breed contempt. Chance for Maryland once again down this right channel as Richardson flicks it along. Bender catches up to it first. Bender will spin back onto his right side for Richardson. Plays catch with Bender, and now flung in towards the back post for Stafford, who's going to catch up to this one. Floated in towards the back post once again. And the Retrievers are there first to it. A rivalry that goes back nearly 40 years to 1982. Four combined goals, a 3-1 to one Maryland lead. And the first 16 minutes or so, it has to be said, for Sasha Swarovski has really gone according to plan of the second half. Maryland's had a good chunk of the ball, as they did in the first half. And when the Retrievers have had it, not too many dangerous, potent opportunities. Padilla tries to set it in towards the middle. It's into side netting. 
A good try there from Brian Padilla. I think he wanted that more towards the center of the box. Still a good effort. Like we said, UMBC has just not really had a good organized attack here in the second half. Maryland's done a really good job of keeping the ball in the midfield and towards Quantrell Jones in the UMBC net. And you have to wonder right now, if you're Pete Karingi, when is that moment that you start to push numbers forward, knowing that Maryland still has the potency to hit you on the counterattack, but needing the two goals. Now into the final 28 minutes of the game, it's certainly a balance for the Retrievers to get numbers forward and be aggressive without being rash, without being desperate, and certainly without conceding a fourth. Well, you feel like it has to be soon. We only have 27 and a half minutes to go, and they need two goals. And yes, Maryland's been very good offensively tonight, but UMBC is not going to win this game by playing defense. If they're going to want to win this game, they're going to have to score two goals. That's the reality of the situation for the Retrievers. We've seen back fours that time that have kind of morphed into a back three for UMBC. It's really, Kanza has it now. Excuse me, that's Hans Nesheim. Sophomore from Norway at the right center back position. It's worked over to the left channel now. Sprung over to the left side. Richardson gets to it first. Risky play getting the boot that high up, but makes full connection with the soccer ball, and it's just a throw in for the Retrievers. Referee says play on. There was a brief horn there. I believe it was an error. But Richardson's able to spin onto it. Nice looking ball to get it ahead, and a whistle will bring the play back in Maryland's favor. 2,498 people in attendance on Thursday. Just from the eye test, I, I was here on Thursday. I think it'd be more for this one. Sizable UMBC contingent as well, it has to be said, especially on this near side where we are when the Retrievers scored their goal. They made plenty of noise to support their Retrievers. It's been Maryland that has had more of the ball, that's had the better of the play, has had the goals at least more of them to power the Terps to this three to one lead. That 19th minute goal when William Forby was able to bundle it in on the back post. It's near side, pretty much the entire right side of the stands. Went ballistic and at the time equalized the game one to one. Substitution time now for Maryland. Three changes going to come in. Hunter George, Jason Russell Rowe, Josh Boma will all come in for the Terps. Should apologize at calling Hunter George as the third goal when it was actually Malcolm Johnston who was on the receiving end of that one from Russell Rowe. Maryland using a variety of players tonight, getting a lot of action from a lot of different guys for Maryland. So far to this point, UMBC only used three subs compared to Maryland's five. Chance for Sasha Sarovsky to see what he has in terms of depth. There's a number of high impact underclassmen and just new faces if you include George, the junior who's a transfer new to the Maryland program. Russell Rowe, as you mentioned, missed a month due to injury in the spring. Now into his sophomore campaign. Works his way onto the right side now. Back it comes to Johnston, who picked up his first goal of the season earlier today. Easy as you'd like now for Maryland. Just content to keep possession as they switch the point of attack over to the right side. And naturally they lose possession as soon as they talk about them slowing down the pace. That was really always bound to happen. Apologies to Sasha Sarovsky there. <laughs> Suhetsky picks it up, trying to spring George down the right hand side just to get a catch up to it before it goes out of play. And referee's going to stop play now and Usher on the training staff as there is a retriever down. It appears to be in some pain. The referee made the motion to Pete Karinke saying, get a substitute ready. As the attention turns now to the retriever that is currently down. Looks like Jackson Betcher is going to get set to come on in. And they have the chance, can't quite make out who that is that is currently down but certainly would not want to add insult to injury, quite literally, for UMBC. 
at the moment. Quantrell Jones going to come on out and check on his teammate. As the retriever is able to get to his feet, thankfully. And Jackson Betcher is going to come on, the senior. Who's now come off the bench in every game, both in the spring and fall of 2021. UMBC substitution, replacing Imeljan Usta. Number 20, a senior out of Hubbletown, Pennsylvania, Jackson Becker. So Becher comes on into the game. It was Ismail John Usta who had to come out due to the injury. And hopefully it's not too long before Usta is able to return to play. If not today, then on Friday when UMBC is back in action at Retriever Soccer Park to take on LaSalle for a matchup on Sunday against Iona. Quick turnaround for the Retrievers. Games on Friday and Sunday. As we already mentioned for the Terps, games on Friday and Monday for them next. Russell Rowe can't quite get on the receiving end of that one. As Mitzel takes a hard bump to ground and that's going to produce a yellow card. Mitzel unhappy with the play. Sasha Sarovsky immediately came out to defend his left outside back and the assistant referee on the near sideline pats Nitzel on the back just trying to settle him down. You know, we're talking about that game against Virginia on Monday. That's going to be a lot of fun on Labor Day. Charlottesville about three, three and a half hours from D.C. Maryland making the quick drive to story programs in men's soccer. That is going to be a really fun and intriguing game for both teams. Bit of a measuring stick perhaps for Sasha Sarovsky. You already got a pretty good one against a ranked Charlotte team on opening day. Sasha Sarovsky, no stranger to scheduling difficult out of conference play, who of course was unable to do so in the spring. As he made up for it in the fall. Conference only, yeah. Virginia and at Georgetown, fifth ranked in the country right now. Chance to really lay claim to the DMV region if you can come away with two wins out of two. That's a lot easier said than done, though. Bender can't quite get on the end of that one. But right now, it's Maryland who has had the ball, who has had the pressure, and who is two goals up. Boma, a bit of a heavy first touch in UMBC. It's able to collect it. Boma was calling for a handball. And now the referee might go to his pocket I think he's going to get it. To Sasha Sarovsky, or maybe just a word with the referee. And it's just going to be a conversation. No card shown. And Sarovsky has certainly made himself heard on this near side. As usual. No surprise. Certainly an impassioned coach, big protector of his players, big defender of his players. And if you talk with just about anyone in this Maryland soccer program, they'll tell you they love playing for him. A lot of people, it's a big reason why you come to Maryland to play for a coach like Sasha Sarovsky. It was over 400 wins in his Maryland coaching career. Hunter George is standing over this one. Both hands in the air for George. Whipped in towards the edge of the six yard box. The header is just unable to direct it towards goal. Caught up to by Rindahl, flicked up by St. Martin, and Russell Rowe couldn't quite get the finishing touch. Golden opportunity there for Maryland. Great set piece from the free kick. Had it back out, came back in, and Jason Russell Rowe nearly made it four goals for Maryland. Just to catch up on some housekeeping, that was Justin John Langbo who received the yellow card in the challenge against Nitzel. So John Langba, the junior from Bowie, is on a yellow. We'll keep an eye on him as he is coming to a little bit more of an attacking position right now. NBC forced to begin to get numbers forward and mass as we have crossed over the halfway point of this second half. And the Terps' two-goal lead remains the same as it was when we were at the interval. Chipped ahead forward in the direction of George. He's got numbers in support. Two of them, as a matter of fact. George goes to ground. 
Referee says play on. And yeah, look clean, good no call there. Now St. Martin has some defending to do, and Richardson's able to track back doing the dirty work defensively and get it out for a UMBC throw. Yeah, I'm sure Sasha Zorowski's not gonna be happy about the no call in the box, but it definitely looked like a clean soccer play. Chipped ahead now for the retrievers. Working on that left channel, and they'll send it back to their back line. Trying to gain a bit of possession, get a bit more of a foothold in this game as we head into the final 20. Saccarellos with it now. Trying to find John Langba on the right side. Cut out, though, well by Nitzel. And it'll have to go all the way back to Nessheim. Maryland able to intercept. A little bit too fancy footwork, though, for the Terps. And here come the retrievers the other way. Dug out well by Suhetsky just to get it out of play and force UMBC to the sidelines. See how far wide the retrievers allow Maryland to push them and then whip in balls into dangerous situations. Keep an eye on John Langba in the center of the park. Already with a goal and the draw against Navy on opening day. Here's Nesheim with it once again. Saccarellos has spread out wide. And he's going to get to it first ahead of Bulma. Saccarellos will try to play it long down this right-hand channel. Randolph just able to sweep it away. The UMBC advancing up this field well, and John Langba will get it in quickly. Gets it right back. Justin John Langba goes to ground trying to push it along. It'll be a goal kick, though. He's been very aggressive. Justin John Langba picked up the yellow card. Went to ground there to try to come up with that. It's that kind of urgency that the Retrievers need at the moment, chasing the game. And John Langba trying to make things happen. Ridiculous Neumann, though. Will be a goal kick. No clean sheet for Neumann. But a chance to pick up a win in his first start of the season after Jamie Lowell got the nod on opening day. Kept a clean sheet. Russell Rowe commits the foul there. Free kick coming the way of the Retrievers. That might have been the first time Nicholas Neumann touched the ball all half. It has just not been down there a lot. Certainly not as much as the team in the dark jerseys would want. And conventional wisdom would suggest that around now with 18 minutes to go needing two goals is the time when you see the Retrievers commit more numbers forward. But they need the ball to do so. Maryland's got the ball right now. In the center of the park, going to take a shot that goes over the head of Quantrell Jones. Hunter George was unable to find the frame there. And he had numbers in support. Sasha Sarovsky they wanted a pass there instead of the shot, but he can't fault the transfer from San Diego State too much for taking the available space. We talked about in the first half, UMBC making the most of their chances. Four shots, four shots on goal in the first half. They don't have any shots at all in the second half. Haven't troubled the cage of Nicholas Neumann yet. And they're going to have to do so pretty soon. They're going to get their way back into this game. Right now, Maryland doing a pretty good job of just seeing out this 45-minute half. They've been the more likely of the two teams to score another. It's too far in the direction of Boma. Maryland trying to catch UMBC on their heels. Montrell Jones surveying his options. Conceded five goals in the first now nearly two full games. Nitzel. Bender for Boma. First touch sends it along for Josh Boma. Cuts it back towards the middle. Now in front for Bender. Flicked along for Russell Rowe. Chests it down in the direction of Suhetsky. Swept away by the Retrievers. There's a player down for Maryland right now. And they recognize it and get it out of bounds. Alex Nitzel ran over to try to stretch that turp out. Can't quite get an identity on who it is. As Richie Nichols has come over to the scorer's table, he's likely to check into the game for Maryland. And for UMBC, they're going to make a couple of changes as well. Ryan Betcher is going to come into the game. It looks like Usta will as well, so that's certainly a good sign after he was down 
with what looked to be a potentially scary injury right back into the game. Certainly great to see for the Retrievers. Looks like Nichols will get, to che set, will get set to check in. Sasha Swarovski now comes out onto the field, and this is certainly not what you want to see from a Maryland perspective, cruising along with a 3-1 to one lead, and now a player down on the ground can't quite get an identity as to who it is. Certainly would not want to speculate in a situation like this. Player able to get back to their feet. I think it's 11, Malcolm Johnston. It is indeed Johnston. Certainly good to see him get back to his feet. He's put in a shift today as the holding midfielder for Maryland. And he's going to be able to get off the field under his own power, which is certainly good to see. Sasha Swarovski's gone out there for a couple more seconds to have a few more words with the head referee as Richie Nichols is going to come on in place of Malcolm Johnston. We have to imagine that would be it for Johnston today in a 3-1 situation. Sasha Swarovski unlikely to put Johnston back in a situation like this, and Nichols, the certainly very competent freshman. So UMBC will just knock it back to Maryland, who had the ball last and put it out of play when they recognized that Johnston was down. Well, if that is it for Malcolm Johnston, he certainly had one heck of a game. He scored a goal, had a lot of playing time. Sir Sasha Swarovski is going to be very pleased with the effort from the junior. One of the more versatile players from Maryland. He's been able to play in a lot of different roles or is forced to play a lot of different roles from Maryland, depending on which way you look at it. He had a lot of injuries last season. But finding into that number eight spot this year, really, mostly. As Boma goes to ground, it'll be a free kick from Maryland. Boma took a shot there. Went down a little awkwardly. Luckily, walking all right. That could have been very dangerous. Hunter George laying claim to this set piece opportunity as well as Maryland content to continue to see time go by. No rush at all for the Terps. Close to the final 15 minutes of play. Plenty of options towards the back post. Russell Rowe looks to be in front of his defender. Both hands go up for George. Whips it in towards the back post at the edge of the 18-yard box. It's headed out of harm's way. George pokes it right back in. It's spilled initially, but Jones is able to get right back to it. Well, George did not get a lot of power on that shot. I think he was with the left foot, but still on goal and had to make Quantrell Jones work a little bit. Boma trying to apply the pressure, as is Russell Rowe. Sprayed out to the right, though. Now Jones will have to play it with his feet with Russell Rowe all over him and just able to get it out of his feet with Quantrell Jones. Maryland continuing to apply the pressure even up two. Not content to just wait back and allow the Retrievers to come at them and defend. A throw in for Maryland. I think a couple of fans were unhappy with the forcefulness at which the ball was hit into the crowd, but uh, if you're sitting that close to the action, you're going to have to keep your head on a swivel. And plenty of folks sitting real close to the action here on a wonderfully loud, excited, and big crowd at Ludwig Field. And they've been treated to a real show by Maryland. Three goals in the first half, but here comes UMBC the other way. Looking to counter, and it's snuffed out by Nitzel. Again, just nothing there for UMBC to counter with, to attack with, to do anything on the offensive end with. Even though there haven't been any goals in the second half yet, it's really been all Maryland. It's gone according to plan for Sasha Sarovsky and more defending to do for the Terps as they've conceded a corner kick. Well, it certainly looked interesting after 19 minutes had gone by, UMBC had equalized almost immediately after Maryland scored to open the scoring. It was 1-1, but two more goals at the end of the first half. UMBC's had their chances, especially in the first, to creep closer. We're unable to capitalize, and now with 13 minutes to go, have to find two in the back of the net in a hurry. It's going to be an in-swinger here. On the near side with the left foot. It's whipped in towards the back post. Neumann kind of caught in no man's land, but Maryland able to sweep it away. 
First step was out, then back in for Neumann. But no harm, no foul as UMBC will get it right back in towards the left channel. Richardson trying to shield his attacker away from the ball. And he will usher it out of bounds for Maryland throw. That was really the first time in the second half we've seen a sense of urgency for you, from UMBC. Only with 12 and change to play here at Ludwig Field. It's going to take a lot for the Retrievers to even this game at three. It's been scrappy at times, but Maryland has been organized, especially in the back. That's been a big reason why they've been able to put together this three to one performance. That's been a huge bright spot in the second half is the back four for Maryland. The same back four from game one to game two, which is important for Maryland to develop that kind of continuity over the course of the season, especially given last year's mixing and matching. If that back four can stay healthy, Sasha Sarovsky will be absolutely thrilled all season. And Maryland will win some games if that's the case. It's a really cool story about college soccer, the back four, just in general, about the way that you can find talent. You've got Brett St. Martin from Mount Airy, Maryland, and Chris Rindahl from Rockville, Maryland, and Nick Richardson from Baltimore, Maryland, three local guys who you go out and you recruit, you know the high schools, you generate the relationships. And then you throw Alex Nitzel in there at left outside wing back, guy who spent time with the Bayern Munich Academy, one of the big clubs in the entire world, as Jones is going to let that one go out. And a ball whipped in towards the middle. It's going to be a goal kick. It really just shows that if you're working hard enough and not a whole lot of college coaches work harder than Sasha Sarovsky to find talent, you can find it just about anywhere to bring to college soccer. A couple of completely different avenues to get to Ludwig Field, whether it's Chris Rindov from Rockville High School, not too far away, or Alex Nitzel from Munich, Germany, which is a little bit further. Sasha Sarovsky has been able to create this back four that so far has conceded only one goal through 170 minutes. We talk about it. All four also have the option to come back next year. Brett St. Martin, the extra year given by the NCAA due to COVID. You know, he has the option to come back. Alex Nitzel, the sophomore, Nick Richardson, a redshirt junior, and then Chris Rindov, a junior as well. So this could be really the start, honestly, of something really cool for Maryland in the back. And you think back to how Maryland's had some of their biggest successes. It's been defensively that 2018 national championship as this one's whipped in towards Norman's net. It's always rising and it will be a goal kick. Famously for Maryland, they did not concede a goal in the NCAA tournament on that run to the title in 2018. That back line, names like Donovan Pines, who's gotten some playing time for the United States national team in competitions like the Gold Cup, also playing relatively local for DC United and Major League Soccer. He looked really good over the summer for the United States when he got some action. There were a couple of chirps on that yep. Gold Cup team. Eric Williamson, who's really impressed with the Portland Timbers, getting a little bit of time. And of course, there's names like Omar Gonzalez and Graham Zuzzi, Zach Steffen as well, who is in the Nations League, but not in the Gold Cup. That was Matt Turner's responsibilities between the sticks for the US. Boy, was he good. Played himself right into the middle of the depth chart for the U.S. national team at the goalkeeping position. Here's Joshua Boma, who's playing himself right into the middle of the rotation for Maryland. But he, he keeps playing, a redshirt freshman from Ghana. That's a gray shirt due to eligibility restrictions in the spring. Sasha Sarovsky so excited to have him back, and he is impressed in the playing time he's had. It gets a touch to it. And UMBC can work back to front. Under nine minutes to go now for the Retrievers to find a pair. Looks like a host of subs going to check in for Maryland with the next. Going to be a Stop. hockey line change, but first Jason Russell Rowe is all alone. Jason Russell Rowe! An exclamation point for the Canadian. And this one is all but ice. Maryland four, UMBC one. Have a night, Jason Russell Rowe, an assist in the first half, a goal to probably ice this one. Eight minutes to go, three goal lead for Maryland. Jason Russell Rowe from Brampton, Ontario.
having himself a night coming off the bench. Terps by three with eight minutes to go in College Park. And unfortunately, the trainer had to come out for UMBC to attend to an injured retriever who has thankfully gotten back to their feet. And we had our eyes on the sideline because it looked like four or five Maryland substitutions were ready to come in. But first, an absolutely beautiful through ball from Brett St. Martin, who gets his first helper of the campaign. Right into the path of Jason Russell Rowe. And he knew exactly what to do with it. Looks like Justin Harris checking into the game for Maryland. I also see the introduction of William Kulvik, the freshman from Norway, making his Maryland debut. Played with the Norwegian under-17 national team from Steinbeck IF in Norway. Getting the chance to play here at Ludwig Field in the second game of the season. UMBC trying to come the other way quickly. And that's a good looking run from the Retrievers all the way through. And that's an immediate response from, the, from UMBC. Off of the kickoff. They come all the way down. And it's four to two with eight minutes to go. Don't leave quite yet. Well, that's certainly one way to respond. That was awfully quick from UMBC. Not out of this just yet. Two goal lead now for Maryland. And we'll see how UMBC continues to pressure here in the final eight minutes. It's Ryan Betcher with his first of the season, the junior from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania from the Philadelphia Union Academy who just went right down the middle of the field and ran through the entire defense. And now Maryland, not quite out of the woods yet and not quite across the finish line. Back it comes to Nessheim. It's interesting from UMBC, both goals have been scored by midfielders today, rather than forwards for the retrievers. It was William Forby with the first, Ryan Betcher with the second. And it really was just all Betcher running all the way down the middle. He would not be denied on that occasion. As this is a good sign for Maryland. This is a really good sign for Maryland as Malcolm Johnston is going to come back into the game. Went down with a pretty scary looking injury in the center of the park, but Sasha Swarovski has seen enough to feel comfortable checking him back into the game. Looks like he'll replace Ben Bender. Johnston, an invaluable piece of Maryland's midfield. Able to get right back to it after he picked up a knock a little while ago. Kolvik called into duty to defend now, trying to usher the ball across the end line. And he just has to kick it out of bounds. UMBC with a throw it. Forby tries to cut towards the byline. Now whips it right into the center of the box. It's just cleared away. But all of a sudden, the Retrievers have found a spark right when they needed it most. Six minutes to go, a two-goal game. And now another shot, and Neumann just able to usher it over the post. Didn't look particularly comfortable, Nicholas Neumann, but was just able to get it out of harm's way. Corner kick coming up for UMBC, though. And the final eight minutes or so, the Retrievers have sparked to life. Starting to put pressure on Nicholas Neumann back there. Really wasn't tested in the first 30 minutes of the half. The immediate goal off the kickoff. And now Kanza's free kick is, uh, corner kick rather, is whipped into a dangerous situation. Maryland unable to clear cleanly. Still with it and now blocked away only as far as the left part of the 18 yard box. And now finally it will be ushered out of play for another corner kick. And this is a UMBC team that has just absolutely turned it 180 degrees after the fourth goal went in for Jason Russell Rowe, they have been sparked to action. Will it be too little too late as we head to the final five minutes, but certainly not going away without a fight. And if nothing else, bringing a whole lot of momentum into their contest with LaSalle on Friday. Here comes another in-swinger. Goes right onto the edge of the six yard box. It's flicked and it's in. Game on in College Park. Well, it's interesting now. UMBC with two goals in about four minutes. 
It's four to three, and here we go. It's a brace for Ryan Betcher. That's who they're crediting it to at the moment. It was a host of retrievers right there at the edge of the six yard box. And as it stands, it is two for Ryan Betcher off of a wonderful corner kick from Jay Golot. The sophomore from the UK put it right on the junior's head. And we are in for a grandstand four minutes and 50 seconds or so as Maryland's four to one lead has been dwindled down to four to three in the blink of an eye. And Maryland getting some of the big guns back out there. Chris Rindoff back in, Justin Geelan back in, Caden Stafford back in. Jason Russell Rose come off, as has William Kovic and Hunter George. And now what was a ceremony to the finish line has become one that Maryland really needs to sweat out. Able to win it back in the center of the park. Here's Richardson spraying it out wide. Stafford. The step over to cut in towards the middle. Caden Stafford unable to work past the second defender, but stays on the ball. And precious seconds tick off the clock. Retriever's able to knock it out. It's going to be a throw in. Well, if nothing else, if you're Pete Karingi, you have to absolutely love the fight in your team in a hostile environment down 4 1. It would have been very easy for the Retrievers just to see out the final nine minutes, head back to Baltimore, and prepare for LaSalle. But they have made things extremely difficult on Sasha Sarovsky's men. As Reese Davis is going to check back into the game. Well, even if the score does finish with a Maryland win, I think Pete Karingi is going to be pretty pleased going back to Baltimore, knowing that his guys did not give up, they did not quit. They fought themselves right back into this game and have put themselves in a position at least to level it at four. They've got three minutes to try to find an equalizer. A four to three contest and how massive does that goal from Russell Rowe loom right now in a through ball from St. Martin. That is the difference as it stands. Stafford trying to cut it back in towards the middle. Nobody home in a white jersey. And with under three minutes to go, Retrievers have it. It's Usta. Working into some space, lays it off. Switch of play over to the left side now. Time and space to the left channel for the Retrievers. Cutting it back in towards the middle. Going to have a shot along the ground. That's not going to trouble Neumann. What was so interesting was that Maryland was completely dominating the second half. They get the goal, and everyone's thinking, all right, Maryland's got it. And then UMBC just out of nowhere, completely just runs down and scores two goals just like that. It has created, at the very least, a highly dramatic finish here on this Sunday night. And Maryland still two minutes away from seeing out this victory, but not without a little bit more excitement and a little more drama than the hosts would have wanted after they went up four to one with under nine minutes to go. Nichols is able to draw the foul, much to the chagrin of the UMBC bench, and the referee is going to get involved to make sure the pushing and shoving comes to a conclusion. That's really the first time that we've had any jawing, really. Referee going to come over towards the scores table and towards the coaches, perhaps just to say, we've got 100 seconds left in regulation, let's cut this out. That's Not too often you don't fouls. see either coach happy with the referee. That's 16 fouls for UMBC in this contest. One yellow card issued to the Retrievers came in the 68th minute against Justin John Langba. As Chris Rindov lifts it forward down the left side. In the direction of Harris, who is not going to get on the end of it. And with about 90 seconds to go, perhaps one more chance for the Retrievers as Quantrell Jones ushers everybody forward in the black jerseys. UMBC, not out of it just quite yet. Flicked on, over towards the right side. Here come the Retrievers once again, cutting towards the byline, and it's going to go out for a goal kick. That's well done by Nitzel, and it had to be. 
No pink Karingi not happy about that one in the corner. Didn't get it. Might have been the last chance there for UMBC. The UMBC bench wants Neumann to be hurried up by the referee. He's going to be in no rush at all. The keeper for Maryland just lifts it long in the direction of Gielet. Usta is able to lay it off. Jackson Betcher lifts it ahead. Gielen heads it in the direction of Harris, who goes on a sprint down the middle. Back it comes to Jones. Under 30 seconds to go. Long it comes for UMBC. Cut out by Richardson. Kept in play. Lifted in towards the back post. Headed away towards the sidelines. It's going to be kept in play with 10 seconds. Lifted in right back towards the middle. Gets all the way through. Still not quite out of danger yet. And now Harris can sweep it clear. And Maryland's going to walk away with a 4-3 to three win. Drama, plenty of goals. A great crowd and all that you can ask for on a Sunday night in college soccer at Ludwig Field. Terps can breathe with their second consecutive win of the season. Well, UMBC.